from the podcast, Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk. It's Grant's Rants Small Talk. Let the rundown begin. Thank you for joining me on this uh, rundown of the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Ex-Wives Club. As long, long title, a lot of people in this episode, a lot to get into. So I had to bring in a co-host, Housewives aficionado, Housewives lover, Ali Cohen, podcast producer. We work together. It's good to see you again. It's so good to see you. And this is exactly what I wanted to talk about with you. So I'm, I'm happy that this is the forum. I haven't talked about Housewives in a long time. I've been just so sick of them. But this is, this is my kind of thing. I am actually, this is what I used to do. I used to recap Housewives and I, I just, I enjoy pulling it apart, you know? So this, oh, I'm yeah. actually really excited to do this. Oh yeah. And this is so, this is so much history. You're going to really yes. feel so at home here. I felt at home. I felt back. Yes. This was so summer by Bravo. Remember that? Like yes. that's how it felt. It harkened back to a beautiful time in my life. We lived through these moments with these women. So now we're seeing it like 10 years later for some of these folks. Like, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's really well cast, I will say. I'm very oh, yeah. happy with the cast. I do, I, at first, I was like, thank God Kyle isn't on this trip. That we, I don't need to watch Kyle go on another vacation. Oh, me so I'm either. so glad we have a break from her. I am so tired of that woman having a one your eat and shop and vacation at least as a break the caftans we've yeah. we've gotten it we've had enough of the caftans however what i will say and we'll get into this i'm sure i was uninspired by the looks i was getting i didn't oh. i was not having fun watching their clothing i think dorinda was the only one that was re- well i don't know, depends what episode at the right. time of recording this podcast we're talking about we re- we watched one and two but this mm-hmm. is all about episode one yes Return to Bluestone Manor. Yeah, the, the fashions, I don't know. Yeah, nothing really jumped out to me in, in episode one that I can think of. Nothing jumped out in a g- good way. I think Dorinda was wearing, I'm sorry, I don't, I just got in hot on here, but. Yes. I, Dorinda was wearing that striped pink pirate outfit that mm. during the dinner, and I just was not for me while well, she was cracking those. Yeah. She's cracking the lobster. There was a lot. There was a lot of fabric drape. So I remember, much. Because I, I remembered like thinking, there's no way that she didn't get butter on that dress. Or so much butter. Like, yeah. So much lobster juice. Didn't care for <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Let's just get into some highlights uh, yes. through this episode. Uh, the arrivals. Any thoughts on uh, Tamara and Vicky and Taylor are arriving together? Brandy, you know, they, they've got they've got to have this confrontation set up, so they stick her in her own car. And um, not a big, you know, they, they, a lot of big setup for, you know, which I don't know if it was a big, big deal when she walked in. You know, no. they try with the music and all that. But- they really did. But it's like Tamara and Vicky so badly want to be housewives again. They just, they miss it so much. They have no problem saying it. They were like, this is our life. And then suddenly we were fired. And that, they don't have much else to give us. No. They don't they didn't but, see what happened in the between time. True. Uh yeah, I mean, we went from Vicky was engaged to now Vicky's done. That's it. Um I the commud the curmudgeon in me loves Vicky uh already. They're not even in the gates of the house and she's already she bitching it. and complaining. Hates it. Hates it. She wishes her life needs to be at a mini mall at all times. Or else she's yes. unhappy. Big box stores. Yeah, she needs access to, the, again, the home goods, the Target. If there is some sort of a bar with a, with a, a, tiki, a tiki bar theme, she wants to be there. That's what she wants. Now, Dorinda is on. She is full lit on. I'm not even talking about drunk at this point. No. Arriving and she just, she's back in front of the camera. She's back in her element. Lady of the Manor, which she's going to refer to herself as this entire time. And I have to get used to it and not make it make me kind of cringe because it's actually, she's endearing in some ways. And I think she, she knows her place and it is the Lady of the Manor. Yes. I like Dorinda in, I like sober Dorinda. I don't, I said this previously, I don't care for really drunk Dorinda. I like her for TV, but I wouldn't want to be friends with drunk Dorinda. True. You don't know what you're going to get. No, it seems terrifying. Yeah. But she gives everyone these baskets and the, all these things. And I just, what, they had cupcakes with faces on them, but they all got her book. And that's her tacky. book? 
<laughs> so tacky. tacky. I don't need that. I'd be like, what are you stuck me to do with this? Rita. I got to carry this back on the plane to wherever I came from. Oh. Uh, not for me. But I did love the pajamas. And Eva was wearing the pajamas the whole time. Eva was a delight yeah, from she- start to finish. She seems to be like she's there for the ride. She knows like this is just just go with the flow. And you've got people like Vicky who are like fighting the flow as much as possible. She does not you know? want to be part of the flow. But what I found funny, Eva loves Vicky. Yes. And Vicky has no idea who Eva is, but Eva is clearly a fan. So sad. I know. Vicky, again, I, I'm a Vicky fan and I know she is problematic. Mm-hmm. It's an issue. But, I, you know, she's there. I find her still so interesting and fascinating. Not for the right reasons, but I just, I'm so glad that she's on this. I love the dynamic with her and Tamara. They were, you know, I just, there's yeah. so much that I get from Vicky. And I get why people, I get why she pisses people off. And we'll get into the oh, yeah stuff. Oh, God. But Vicky's she, not having sex. It, she's not having sex. What happened with Steve Lodge? What happened? Do I care? I don't know. You uh, know who cares? Dorinda. Dorinda. <laughs> yeah. Care. What happened? She was, is there a vagina she's asking? You know, why do you care so much? You're not the one who got yeah. broken up with. Yeah. I, Vicky, she's just always her life. She's one of those people. We all know them that need to have a man in their life. Like yeah. they cannot function without one. And the thing is like Vicky can, I think she can function she without one, but she feels as though she needs to have one. She doesn't want to die alone. Oh, uh, all this stuff, it's so which I get. Sad. When you reach a certain age, I guess too, you're like, you realize like, you know, that could be, that could be a reality. And you could, but you can make that your stopping point or you could, it could just be part of your life, you know? And she really, you're right because she had Don and Don wasn't filling her love tank. We know that much, but can anyone fill her love tank? I, can anyone, I, I was even thinking with Dorinda, Dorinda was thinking about getting married or something. Can anyone connect with these women now that they're celebrities? Can you trust any of the men is what I'm asking, really? Because if you get a narcissist in there, like, you know, I feel like with Teresa of New Jersey, like that guy just like studied her and oh. just, you know, like it's like a fame thing. It's like a, a fame, like this is my way into this world. Yep, yep, yep. yep I don't know how you find a good guy when you're a TV star. It's hard to find a good guy any which way, but when they can look you up, that's not easy. I can't imagine. I know. And Bravo has like six best of drunk Dorinda clips on YouTube. Oh. I mean, and they basically, hard. they basically displayed it on the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And Dorinda's still going with this. Um, I'm on pause. You guys are all ex housewives. I'm still the only one on pause. I can't stand this story. I don't care for Andy Cohen. I'm so tired of like him flexing. We all know these decisions are made by like a whole network worth of people. Um, but he always gets the credit for these things. And it's just, yeah. ugh. Yeah, it's, it's so not, gross. It's not quite fair. But who said menopause when she said I'm on pause? Someone said <laughs> menopause. That really got me. It was yeah. probably Phaedra. Phaedra had a million one-liners oh. that killed me. I just, yeah, I was going to say at the top, like, who I was excited to see and all that, but I wanted to get into it. But Phaedra, I am thrilled just that she is there. I don't like how she went out on Atlanta. That of was not course right. not. Problematic, to say the yes. least. But the one <laughs> line of, she knows what she's doing on this show. When she wants to have a good time, she knows how to do it right. So many times I was like, Phaedra! Like, I, mm-hmm. I screamed when she would say these hilarious things. Oh, when she was saying about, oh, I've heard about Brandy but I do like attractive people. <laughs> I like to wake up to something nice. I, oh, she we is- can, Who can't relate to that? I can, I can, but, and mm. she's great. She's like, look, is she insane? Maybe, but I don't know her and she's pretty. <gasps> good enough, good enough it. for her. That is good enough. So now speaking of uh, Brandy, Brandy and Tamara, it already starts to kick off. <laughs> they go back and forth about their Twitter feud. I saw the video a couple of years ago, of Brandy on her bed. I don't know what that was all about, drinking and tweeting. Like they said it was a podcast. That's not her podcast. Their podcast is unfiltered, but like, I don't know. They're, I don't, I didn't know what that was when they showed a clip of it. Yeah. It was just like a video series she did. I guess there okay. wasn't enough money in it. So she That's didn't fair. continue with it. But um, yeah, I mean, it really did get ugly. Like Brandy brought Tamara's kids into it, but technically <sighs> didn't Tamara call her uh, unstable? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we saw the, we saw the said, thing come up. 
Oh, yeah. No, and the thing is that these women, they're starting to realize as we're breaking down the fourth walls that they're being recorded and mm. they're, all of their social media is, we're all seeing it. And they'll, they'll to everyone's face, say, no, that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, mm. it roll back the tape. And now we're starting to see it. That's true. <laughs> I know they love to pull up the articles, you know, the, the quotes and all that to prove that the housewife doesn't know what she's talking about, a classic trope. And yeah, Tamara fell into that one. Ta Tamara had enough time to do homework for this. She knew that she would be faced with Brandy. That's when you, you know, I'm not saying she needs to bring computer printouts with her, but at least familiarize herself with the material. She, and she didn't. No. I'm surprised by that. Tamara is an all-star housewife. I've said this for a long time. I really she, like her. She's a true also. She knows how to play the game. She knows how to be a housewife. And that is underlined and in quotes. Correct. Uh, for the role that they are cast to play. Correct. And it's funny that they even mentioned this. Like even Brandy is like, I don't want to be all housewives right now. Like it's like a verb, you know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what about the whole Scorpio thing? That was brought up pretty immediately. Yeah. Now what's, now Grant, what is your sign? I am a Gemini, a true blue Gemini, all faults and goodness included. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It just yeah. kept bringing so up I don't, Scorpio. I don't know much about, yeah, I don't know much about Scorpios. I, I, for, I did hear that perhaps they're very good in bed. That was something I heard about Scorpios. So well, I don't know. Uh, what, what is your sign? I'm a Virgo. Just like okay. Tamara. I think Tamara said she was too. I do very well with Virgos. I get along very well. For those who are watching this video, I have a, a stress ball shaped in the shape of a strawberry. It's beautiful. Jill would approve. We'll yes, get she, into that in episode uh, two. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't wait. <laughs> yes. So what else happened here? Taylor and Brandy. Taylor says she oh. felt a lot of pressure while shooting her season. Understandably so. Yep. She felt like the weakest link on the show. Understandably yep. so, unfortunately. But basically they're trying to paint the scene or at least brandy is by saying well we were both in a bad place in season two we're both really going through it mm -hmm. and like one of these things is not like the other nope. right i mean we're talking oh, about god now taylor in the, the midst the midst of this horrible abusive marriage the suicide of her husband and brandy got a divorce it, uh, as soon as taylor came onto my screen i felt the tragedy i just her story True. was so heartbreaking. And, oh, and to see Kennedy, who's such a big girl now, she's 15 years old, I feel like a billion years old. <laughs> um, it, it just, she went through so much. And I understand, I mean, look, I've never gone through a horrible divorce or any divorce. I'm sure it's heartbreaking. But to say like, I went through it too. And then when she said, she said something like, oh, well, your husband died and that affected me. Ma'am. Yeah, that just doesn't translate. That doesn't, you're not going to gain any sympathy from the widow. No. You know? And never. My concern is that this poor woman is going to be re traumatized by having to like basically relive this entire thing. Well, yeah. I mean, in a way, she left that conversation saying that she actually was more pissed than for when she started. And I can understand that. I would, be. I mean, I will say though, she got along to get along with that because she could have easily dug in deeper and said, you're making my story, your narrative. Like she could have really, like you said, been super pissed, but she did just come away from the table. You know, I, I give her credit yeah. for that. I she mean, Brandy is a button it. pusher. Brandy is a button pusher, but it's not even like, I don't know, maybe some people disagree with me. I don't even think it's intentional. I think it's no. just, she's just a fool. You know? She's a fool. That's a great word for her. Because yeah. I, I kept thinking, I like Brandy. I do. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, you're funny. And I feel like if I sat in a room with you, had a drink with you, we would be get along really well. But then she says something like that. And I'm like, oh, you're a fool. You're a fool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was very foolish in this episode. Mm -hmm. So let's cut to this dinner. I'm curious <laughs> to get your thoughts on this. I mean, there were, you know, where this is the rundown, we're going through things quickly. Yep. So we're, you know, I, I, we've got some time on the clock. So if there's anything that's jumped out to you, let me know. I will. Uh, before we get into the dinner. But this dinner, uh, Brandy wants to start, or no, it's not Brandy this time. It's D Dorinda wants to start with a question game. And I always uh. said, what could go wrong with this? And, you know, they either go on for a while or they go really quick. This one I think was what? Like, what, what is your insecurity? 
Right. And I don't think they answered another question after this one because no. that's all anybody needed. All these icebreakers uh, are like just setting people up to say the worst things. Yes. Or to, to get like, people really riled up. Yeah. Tell the person next to you what you really think of them. Well, what right. could go wrong with that? But like the fact that the first question on the first night is what is your insecurity when all these women who know how to play the game, they've, they've made careers out of exploiting their co-stars insecurities. Correct. So it's making everybody like put all their cards on the table that then for the rest of the week, the women can pick on. They're right. Wait. Are they alone? Their marriage? Are they a success? Are they enough? Like all the stuff they can throw back in each other's faces. Like that's that's a loaded question. I would not appreciate it. Who do you think wrote it? The the producers, right? Probably. Yeah. 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 It had to yeah. be. I yeah. mean, I think they usually do these things, right? Absolutely. Because they were actually, yeah, this was the episode where they were all pre-printed, right? They were pre-printed. So was, okay. So yeah, some poor PA had to go and <laughs> get a wireless printer and one of the trailers out back and print out these p little pieces of paper and dorinda's answer was wasn't it to not she was afraid she wouldn't be relevant and that opened up the whole housewives of it all and it's like oh so you're afraid to not be a housewife anymore and on she was like no 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 that's not what i mean i think it might have been what she meant i think inside she might feel that way it definitely I don't came know. across that way. I mean, it came initially. I felt initially. like initially I was like, oh, Dorinda, we just, just say you want to be back on TV. You're on it now. Relax. But no, I get like, she wants to be remembered for something. I mean, I think we, but I that's normal. That. Absolutely. Everybody does. Absolutely. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, for someone though, who's so worried about being remembered for something, she certainly doesn't mind getting plastered on TV and that's, what's going to live forever. Oof. And she, it, it happened real quick. It, this is all, everything happened before 10 p.m. Like this entire episode, first yeah. day before 10. There was a lot, a lot Pan going on. Packed. Yes. I mean, I didn't think they were going to get into the, like, all these like Taylor needs to sit down with Brandy across the table and talk about things. Like I thought we'd have some like, we've got some time. We've got like, what are they there for a week? So I thought we would have like, you know, some breathing room to kind of get to these things. But nope, not in this episode. Nope. nope. No, they have eight days because I, I saw okay. it at the beginning. They have eight days and they are going to do their damnedest in these eight days. They're going to fill mm. every single crack. They're not going to leave one thing. Yeah. It, oh, these, they're working hard. They're working hard for their money. I'm telling you that. So true. <laughs> Brandy brings up season two uh, and how bad it was for her again at this mm -hmm. dinner. She, as, I can't believe she brought it up again. And uh, she feels that Taylor um, exploited the situation uh, with writing the book. Remember mm -hmm. the, the Today Show mm -hmm. interview? Taylor went on. Uh, and it was a hot minute. I remember because I was like, what is this? Why is this book out so quickly? But I'm glad that Taylor finally, on a big platform and not just Twitter, had the opportunity right. to explain she needed a cash advance to take care of her daughter. She had no money. We all know like he died like in debt. So like, what was she going to do? What a nightmare. I was so proud of her for her response. First of all, it was measured. She really, I don't know what I would have done. I might have gone insane. I might have gone absolutely crazy on Brandy and said, how dare, you know, I would have got, I would have freaked out. But she was so measured. Here's why. And the show was protecting her. And I totally believe it. That is so scary. And when she was confronted about the abuse she was shocked you could tell it was so upsetting every bit of her storyline just was heartbreaking very true mm. yeah i am um, i'm glad that she had the moment like i will say i was kind of scratching my head i was like why is she considered an all-star like you know but she's gone through so much that it's like mm -hmm. good to catch up with her and so many people were invested in her story so i think that she's i'm enjoying her on the show she's definitely earned her place on the show we're like i view tamra as a definite all-star yes there are others where i'm kind of, even like eva i was like why but I'm eva was confusing the show i'm enjoying her on this she's a good balance to the like vicky's you know what i mean she's a good balance to the brandies Yes, yes, yes. It, we need Dorinda. something. We need, you know, there's a red pill and a blue pill. We need one to bring us down, right? Like we, I know that's not the analogy, but we're, we're too up. We need to be brought down. And Eva is that energy and she wants to 
smoke some weed. Like she wants right. to, she wants to relax and it is vacation. Well, here we go at this point in the episode where Brandy is uh, calling Taylor a bitch and uh, she tells Vicky to sh- shut the F up and the music is coming in. The first fight is kicked off. It's the end of the episode. Um, and yeah, I mean, what, did, what did you make of, of this moment where the heat was suddenly turned up? And of course, it's coming from Brandy. We all expect it from Brandy. Everyone came into this situation talking about Brandy. They, they all said, she's, I don't know her, but she's crazy, or I do know her and I have a problem with her. It's to be expected. And she, like you said, is a fool and will say these things that are not going to look good for her and they're going to make people upset. Yeah. I mean, they, they raised a good question. They were like, what does Brandy not making any money during season two have to do with Russell's death? It does like, nothing. It's just, she's, I mean, it's got to be the alcohol. I know I listened to Brandy's podcast. She said that she doesn't know if she's going to be canceled because she blacked out multiple times on this trip and she doesn't remember anything. So (laughs) anything, so is this one of those moments? I mean, you know, it also had to be a nightmare for the story producers to be like, um, let's talk about the dinner. And she'd be like, I don't know, I was blacked out. Like That's that's an easy out too, though. But you're letting everybody else. Yeah, but you're letting everybody else say what happened on your behalf too. you're not able to speak for yourself but she knows she sounded insane right like she knows that she if she thinks she's going to be canceled in her blackout state she knows what she's like in yeah. her not blackout state she's a mess and she needs to uh come correct i think yeah you know brandy is one of those that has made a full not one there's quite a few but she has made a full-on career of being on reality tv so she mm-hmm. knows what to bring and how to bring it. But also, like, do you think this is like she's doing this and she's like, sure, I'm gonna have like six drinks and just we're gonna we're gonna shoot the show and we're gonna this is the job? Or do you think she's just there, just that this is re- the real her? Like, the former. This is what she does. I think the former. I think I don't think she's not like this, but I do think she went in saying, I'm gonna drink so much because this is the gig and this is what people know of me and like of me. And that's what happened. Do I think she blacked out? Perhaps. Do I think she doesn't remember anything? I don't. I don't think so. I think she knows some of the things she said. And I do think she also probably has brought up this Russell thing before. Like this is not a new thought and it's not a blacked out thought. Mm, Yeah. I just don't know why she's so affected by it. She claims she loved the family. I'm like, right. they were not that close, at least from what I we don't can remember. tell. I don't, I don't remember, you know, Taylor, even, even on this episode, being like, we hung out a lot. Like, they, they hadn't seen each other. Yeah. Since. Yeah. We all know these shows. The majority of these women aren't hanging out when the cameras aren't there. No. And I think that was the dynamic. I thought, and especially like, those two. Yeah. Why would she? Taylor had a lot going on. More stuff to do than hang out with, you know, Brandy on the crutches at that time. Well, the crutches. Yeah. Oh, but watching uh, the the Richard sisters yelling at Brandy, I mean, it did bring me back, but Taylor was so good to Brandy. She's the one, she said, enough. She got in the middle and said, no one's going to be screaming at each other in this house or no one's going to be touching something. Yeah. And she was right. She's like, I was so good to Brandy and now she's doing this to me. I don't understand why. I don't understand why either. Mm. I don't understand. Well, on that note, let's get into our final thoughts. Okay. I'll let you go first. I was delighted. Um, my, I, I just was overwhelmed. My senses were heightened. I felt brand new. This is summer. It, it really kicked off my summer in just the right way. I give this episode an A minus because I do think that there were some things that just hit me in the wrong way, but I, I love it. I, I had anxiety the whole time. Really? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as I saw Brandy, oh. I felt anxious. I was like, oh no, what yeah. are we going to do? You know what's coming. And I you don't know what's coming. Actually. I don't know what's coming. You don't with her. I didn't think about Jill until they brought her up. And then I went, I gasped. I was like, right, Jill's coming. Uh oh. Yeah, it's always an interesting dynamic when like you're like you, they kind of like spent the first night 
you know, we're going to get into this. I'll save this for, for episode two. Absolutely. I, yeah. I have a lot to say about this. Me too. My final thought is I like seeing Bluestone Manor. I wish I could get a better view for how big that house is. Me if you too. notice, I don't know why they do this, but they, I don't see it in, like, I know they've got wide shots, but I don't see it like from above. Like, I can't tell how big it is. It's a lot of tracking shots. Uh-huh. It's like angles. Like, I know the house goes in different wings. So I'm trying to get a, a vibe for how big it is. Now, for all those wings, why couldn't everyone have a full bed? True. And, and Brandy's sleeping on a pull-out couch. On a pull-out couch. <laughs> Which the fish room. Handmade. The fish room looked great. Yeah, nice, renovated, was... updated. Yeah, blue oh, it matters. needs more fish. Needs more fish, though. It's not you know, the fish room unless there's more fish. Yes, I need more. At least, at least a few more uh, of like a big tuna on the wall or something ridiculous. Exactly. But I noticed that in her backyard, she had beautiful urns with flowers, and then they had these big, like I don't know what they were, like barrels with like stones in them, which I guess would be like you know fire pits for later. But it really took me out of it because she had all these beautiful urns with flowers, and then there's like all this thing full of like the rocks. You know? You're looking at the landscaping. Yes. Well, I'm looking at the whole thing. Yeah, I want to. I want to get a. Full- well, yeah, because I want to see. I want to see Bluestone Manor. I'd like to go there. Yes, it's supposed to be such a beautiful place. It's supposed to be kind of a character in the story. So, like, yes, I'm. I'm definitely studying the space. But is there anywhere to whoop it up? I don't know. No, I don't I. think so. Well, we'll have to find out. Mm-hmm. I don't. I would not want to be stuck in that house for eight days. I would not want to have like just really, you know. I, I need to get out. Very the shining, of those, right? Yeah, I am one of those people. I do need to like get a change of scenery. I need to stretch my legs. I need to like get out from the the land. Agree. You know, so it would it would be good enough for a while. But I, I at least every other day, I would need an activity outside. And we'll get into the activities because they're coming up. There's a lot more. Keep it here for more of this uh, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip rundown. I'm excited to do it. I'm, I'm thrilled. So um, there's a lot more to discuss. This next episode is 58 minutes long. Ah! Yes. So <laughs> lot, lots to discuss. So check it out. Thank you guys for supporting the show. And uh, rants will continue. I'll be back. Thank you. This has been Grant's Rant Small Talk. Want more? Join the full conversation on Grant's Rant's Hollywood Talk Podcast.